Welcome back. It's Greg Hughes with video number 14 in the Quick Start video series for 90 Second Website Builder. Hey, let's take it up a notch and do something slightly more advanced. Although it's really not that hard, what we're going to do is add a capture form to our website. Let's say I wanted to have a place where people could send me their name and email or something so they could get more information about a particular product or a topic. Well, we just call that a form in web design terms. And there's lots of different kinds of forms. We're just going to make a simple form in this demo and show you how easy it is to do with 90 Second Website Builder. You'll notice there's a whole section in the toolbox called Form Controls. And we could actually manually build a form. We would take what's called the form area. I'm going to put my form right here under the picture of Houdini. And I would draw a box. And this is where I'd put all of my form objects, which would be like you know, the name field and the label and the push button that says submit and all that stuff. That's if we wanted to build one manually or by scratch. But we really don't have to do that. I'm going to use what's called the form wizard, which is usually the best way to do it just because it's easier and faster. Here's how the form wizard works. I'm going to click that tool and drag the box out here, my form area box, and the form wizard will pop up and just basically walk me through the building of a form. So let me move the window here so you can see what's happening. I have a few options. I can create a form based on a built-in template that's already in the software. Or I can build one from scratch. Or I can just create a blank form and add controls later. Well, we're going to use the templates. That's the advantage of using the wizard. So we're going to leave that selected and go to Next. Now there's a whole library of templates that we can use just for building forms, from simple to complicated. Let me talk to you about just a few of these. So if we click on business contact, you can see this is a little thumbnail picture of what the form has on it. Name, email address, all of these fields. That one's a little bit more complex. Or a comments form would be one where somebody just wants to make a comment and click a submit button. Here's a contact form that's very simple. Name and email and a send button. Here's one that's got a lot more information. Name, address, city, state, etc. We could use that form. And by the way, we could edit these templates too. We can add other objects or take objects away. This is just to get us started. But let me show you some of the other special forms that are built in just to get you started with building forms. I could do a dictionary lookup. I could use an ASP form, which is a different kind of hosting. Most people don't use this kind of hosting, but it is available in 90 Second if you have it. If GoDaddy is your host, they require a certain kind of form called a GD form. Well, that's already built in here. So if we're using GoDaddy as hosting, we would use this and click Next and go on and build our form from there. And again, we could add boxes and, and labels and all those things. Or we could create a telefriend uh, form where you could have somebody uh, come to your website and have it send an email to a friend to tell them about the website. Also, there's a program out there called FormBuddy. And if you're using that software, you can create a form using FormBuddy, one that's compatible with another software called MailMyForm, or a link exchange request. These are all just form ideas. There's even a set of forms that work with the PayPal tools built in here, an add to cart button, uh, a donation button, a donation form, or a price option. All of these are compatible with PayPal. Here's an RSVP form for people, if creating your, say you're creating a, a website for a baby shower or a wedding. This would be a great way to collect RSVPs. There's forms that work with Google Maps that will do a search Google Maps and present you with the result, or Live Maps or MapQuest or a search on Wikipedia. You can do Bing, Google, and Yahoo searches with these forms, or create a support form for your customers, a survey, feedback, lots of different kinds of forms to work with. Okay, so now that you've got an overview, and remember each of those can be edited, what I'm going to do in this demonstration is just use a simple form so that you can see how it works. We'll use the template called Contact One because that's a simple web form to work with right now. I select that one and click Next, and then I am ready to go. I can add elements here if I want to or rename them, whatever I want to do. I'm going to keep it the way it is and go next. And I'm just going to say next and finish. Okay, so you can see here's my form. And uh, I don't need all of this area for my form. I can make it smaller if I want. What's really important is that all of my form objects live inside this gray area called the form area. What I can't do is take an object outside of the form area, otherwise it will not work has to be inside the form area. Okay, and of course I can make this as big as I want to. I can also adjust the way this gray area looks by going to the style, making the background be a solid color, all of those good things. I won't do that in this demonstration because 
you can play with that. That's really easy. We're just going to leave it gray. Okay, so let's say I wanted my guests to be able to send me their name and email. I might put a piece of text up here that says send me more information about something. Let's do that real quick. And what I can do with that text is I can put it up here. I can also include it in the form if I want to. Let me select all of these things and sort of drag this down. Remember, you can multiple select things and move them around. Let's put it in the form just because it looks a little bit better. Maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, select the text and maybe bold it a little bit and bring it up in size. And Let's see. Let's make this be a little bit bigger. Let's, let's select these objects. Just want to clean it up a little bit. I'm just messing around here. Okay. Anyway, you can make your form look as pretty or ugly as you want it to. Okay, now my form is pretty much ready to go, right? No, it's not. I just have to uh, do a couple of things to make the form work, but they're really easy to do. First of all, I have to think about this. When someone fills out this form, when they type in their name and email, and they click the send button, I have to know where I want them to go. They have to go to another web page after they've clicked the send button. We call that a success page. And so you want to make sure you have created a page that will be your success page. I've created one and I called it thanks.html. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to double click on it. And so basically I just created a web page that said thanks for submitting your request and then I might have some text here that says thank you and I could even have links on here that show them other things about my website or products I'm selling or whatever. But the point is I have to have a place for them to go after they submit that form. So I called mine thanks. You can call yours whatever you want to call it. Just remember what you called it. Okay, let's go back to the index page where my form is. That's one thing I need to know. Here's the other thing I need to do. I'm going to need to change what kind of page my index page is. Anytime you use a form, because we're using a program called PHP, actually a language called PHP, I just have to make one change to this page. Very simple to do. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on the page, go to page properties, and make sure that the file extension for this page, instead of being HTML, it needs to be PHP. Now that won't affect anything else on the page. It'll just make my form work. So now my index page, is instead of being index.html, it's going to be index.php. So you'll notice up here, it's got the HTML extension, but I'm going to change that. And now it's a PHP. So that won't matter. It'll just make my form work. Okay, so we're almost done. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to double click on the form area. Remember this gray box? I'm going to double click on it and just set it up to handle this information when people fill out the form. First, I'm going to check a box called Use the Built-in PHP Form Processor. That's a form processor that's built into my web hosting account, not 90 Second Website Builder. But this happens on the server. This happens online. So I'm telling the software to use the PHP form processor that's in my hosting account. This is the email address I want the information in this form sent to. Because I'm having them fill out a form, I want that data sent to me. So I put my name here. So I'll need an email address. It's important that this email address is the email that's on the same domain as the website. So I need this to go to greg at coolmagictricks.org or whatever website email address you've set up on your hosting account. And then once you go into your control panel hosting account, you can redirect this to some other email address. But for the form, it needs to go to an email of the same domain. That's the domain. The email address needs to be of the same domain that the website is sitting on. It's really important. Okay, here's what the subject is going to say when the email arrives. I don't really care what that is because I'm the one that's going to see it. It's coming to me. Same thing for this. It's going to give me a little message. But it's also going to have in the email all of the information or data that's in the form. In my case, I'm just asking for their name and email. So I'm going to get an email at greg at coolmagictricks.org that contains the person's name and email address in a little email to me but I have to send them somewhere after they click that send button. That's what my success page is for. So remember, I created one called thanks. I'm going to click it here, and it tells me that after they click the send button, that's where they'll go. Now, if I want to, I could create an error page. And this is a page I might want to make if my form was really complicated. And what that would do is if somebody missed a field or did something wrong in the filling out of the form, it would send them to a page that I would have created that said, oops, sorry, you did that wrong. Let's go back and try it again. But my form's pretty simple, so you don't have to have an error page. But you do have to have a success page. 
Otherwise, they have no place to go when they click send. That's really all there is to it. So all I've done is I click this button, made sure I'm using an email address of the same domain, and made sure I have a success page. When I click OK, my form is completely done now. Now I'm ready to publish. Remember, you can't test a PHP object offline. This has to be on the internet so we can try it out. So I'm going to publish this page and put it online and then we'll go see how it looks. Okay, so here we are online. I've published my website and so we're looking at it live on the internet. Now if you're wondering how I published my website, don't worry. There's a video or two about that. We'll concentrate just on the forms for now, but publishing is easy. We'll do that in another video. And as you can see, here's my website with my form right here. So let's give it a test. I'm going to type in a name. I'll use mine and an email address. So let's type in Greg at 90secondwebsitebuilder.com. And remember when I click the send button, it should take me to the thank you page. Let's see if it works. I click send. And sure enough, there's my thank you page. Thank you for submitting your request, etc. Again, I should put links on here to help them go back to wherever we want them to go. But we know the form works and we know it takes us to our success page. But what's it do to the website owner? Uh, it sends an email with that information. So let me go check my email and see what kind of a mail uh, message that it sent me. So let me open up my Outlook and there's the email that came in right there. Uh, there's the subject line website form. It uh, came from somebody named Greg at 90 Second Website Builder. It was mailed to that email address that I put in my form, Greg at CoolMagicTricks.org. And this is what the email message looks like. It basically gives me the data that was in the form, their name and their email, as well as some other things like the IP address. This is a technical thing, but it's kind of important sometimes to track somebody's IP address, especially if they're spamming you and you want to block that IP, but that's a different story. But anyway, the email was sent to me because I filled out the form. It's that easy just to create a website form on your website with 90 Second Website Builder. Now obviously there's many many other kinds of forms out there and we didn't go into all of them but if you mess around with the form wizard and just play with it make sure that you remember to save your the page that your form is on needs to be on a PHP page and uh, remember to make a success page and you'll be fine.